But I'm not sure when we'll have a face-to-face -face clinics. But at least uh, for each group, merong ophthalmoscope and otoscope. Then each one of you should have a flashlight or a pen light, tang depressor, a ruler or a flexible tape measure, a thermometer. Of course, you have watches naman, di ba? A sphygmomanometer or a BP apparatus, stethoscope, a gloves and a lubricant. This one, the vaginal specula, this is for OB. Then you should have a reflex hammer. The tuning fork, hindi rin to must, but siguro one of the members of the group should have a tuning fork. Um, Q-tips or safety pin, pede for this will be used during your neuro examination, especially when doing a two point discrimination test, a cotton, a paper, and a pencil. So these are the things that you will be need, needing for the clinics. Then for your textbook, we will be using Bates physical diagnosis. Can also use as reference uh, campus physical diagnosis. So at this point, do you have a question? So wala. Doc, I'm sorry. My yes. comment of Doc. Um, doc, when po ni kailangan Doc? Uh, during clinics, this will be used during clinics. But at this point, pag nag-clinics tayo, kasi this is, is more, uh, our clinics will be virtual pa lang. But this is for the face-to-face -face clinics, especially during physical examination. So these are the things that you will be needing. So as early as now, the first group part, but hindi pa. The first part kasi is uh, history taking. So you will, be need, you, you will not need these things pa, ha? Huh? Okay, but thank you. But during the start of your physical examination, you will be needing this, even if it's virtual, because um, during um, practical exam, nakabidyo naman yan, uh, you will also need these things. Pero at this um, mga during history taking, you will not need this. Um, mga equipments. Okay. Any more? And groupings po, Doc? Mag-groupings na kami, Doc, as early as now? No, no. It will be, Dr. San Gabriel is in charge. So, you will be group depending on the availability of the, ano, of the preceptor. So kung alimbawa dalawa lang yung preceptor, most probably <laughs> big groups na. But uh, last year, we have seven ata na, na preceptors. So you will be grouped into Friday and Thursday group. Tapos then you will be further subdivided into smaller groups depending on the uh, um, availability of the preceptor. Hmm? So, Dr. San Gabriel is in charge. So, this week, wala pa tayong clinics. Huh? After the discussion of history taking, mag, uh, ano na kita? Mag, uh, uh, what's this? Clinics. Okay, sige. I will proceed na. Ha? So, our... First topic is on interviewing and health history. So health history or a health history interview is a conversation with a purpose. So um, it is very important to get the health history of the patient. So you will know the, the progression, what happened to the patient, 
even the past medical history has if it has something to do with the current problem of the patient. And then relating effectively with your patient is a the most valued skill of clinical care. So it's very important that you get to relate to um, to have rapport with your patient. So you focus on gathering information that is related to the problem of the patient. Hindi chismisan, ha? So information related to the problem of the patient or the reason why the patient was admitted. So uh, you need technique, technique that will promote trust as well as convey respect. So during um, history taking or during interview, you allow the patient's story to unfold in its most full and detailed form. So once the patient start to talk, do not interrupt, huh? do not interrupt. Let the patient tell his or her story regarding what happened to him or to her. You also have to establish a supportive uh, interaction, meaning you can help the patient feel more at ease when sharing information. So that's why when the patient start to talk, do not interrupt para the patient would feel more at ease. Because if you will interrupt the patient um, later on, he will not be giving you information. Kasi ininterrupt mo. So, the foundation for therapeutic clinician-patient relationship is when you establish a supportive uh, interaction. So, very important ito, ha? Otherwise, um, as I've said kanina, if uh, you will interrupt the patient, or you are, uh, what's this? Um, kasi the, pac the, the patient will be observing you uh, on what you're doing. Pag hindi ka naman uh, confident in what you're doing, the patient also will not be confident in telling you his or her story regarding his or her illness. Okay? So, your health history format is actually a structured framework for organizing your patient information in written or verbal form for other healthcare providers. So it focuses the clinician's attention on specific kinds of information that must be obtained from the patient. So if uh, the patient um, saw uh, consult because of uh, chest pain, for example. So you focus on information related to the occurrence of the chest pain, um, if there are any aggravating factor, what are the risk factors, why the patient developed chest pain, and so forth. So during interview, you generate pieces of information. So, may mga information ka na kinukuha from the patient. As I've said, it should be related, information should be related to the problem, to the health problem of the patient. So, by doing this, you should be fluid, meaning um, uh, you are confident in what you are asking on what you are doing. So it this entails an effective communication and relational skills. Kasi di ba pag hesitant ka, uh, nakikita yun ng patient. Um, if you are not confident in what you are doing, the patient also will feel that this student doesn't know what he's doing. So uh, sometimes these patients would bluff, would give you 
false information. Nakakasabot ito, Hera. So it also requires knowledge of the data that you need to obtain and ability to elicit accurate information and interpersonal skills that allow you to respond to the patient's feelings and concerns. Of course, um, you should be you know, um, concerned also with the patient's feelings. Kasi baka naman uh, the patient is already in pain, you are still pursuing what you are asking, tapos uh, the patient would like to rest already. So uh, give patient time. Huh? Give patient time. And then, hindi ano na, uh, it's a, you, you have another class. Um, kailangan matapos ko ito today, at this moment. Okay? So there are different kinds of health histories. You have comprehensive history, a problem-oriented history, and a cost history. When we say comprehensive history, this is applicable for new patients. Comprehensive, as the word implies, complete. So, dapat complete. So, actually, for comprehensive history, this is being done in mga in an executive checkup where you need to know the complete history of the, the patient even their past medical histories, past uh, illnesses, their mga past surgeries, the family histories. It's a complete, a comprehensive history. When we say problem-oriented history, these are applicable for patients who seek care for a specific problem. For example, cough. So you now focus or you 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 build your history around the the cough, the complaint of cough or problem of cough. So when when did the cough develop? What are the associated signs and symptoms? Are there risk factors why the patient developed cough? So this is problem-oriented history. If there are multiple problems, you always focus on that particular problem. For example, the patient has another problem, like um, the patient has history of diabetes. So you will be asking um, about the diabetes of the patient. There is family history of diabetes. There's signs and symptoms related to diabetes. So that's problem oriented. So um, your problem oriented history is more of a limited interview. So this is tailored to a specific problem. Whereas if you focused history, these are applicable for patients who seek care for ongoing or chronic problems. So follow up patients. So you already know the history of these patients. So you now focus on, for example, self-management, the status of the problem, like the patient is hypertensive. So the patient come back and then for a follow-up checkup. So you will be asking, um, are you taking the medications or are there symptoms related to hypertension like headache, nip? nape pains, and so forth. And then the functional capacity, if it's limited by uh, his illness. For example, the patient would say that I have headache or nape pains. I cannot work because of the headache. So these are the things that you will be asking. So this is more on focused history. So how do we you know how do we approach? So this is the approach to uh, the interview or your interviewing milestone. So first is you take time for self-reflection. So before you go to your patient, um, take time to do a 
self reflection so tama ba yung ginagawa mo <laughs> or um you are just forced to do that because it's a requirement because if you don't love what you're doing di ba parang um it's heavy for you mabigat para sa iyo so when you do self reflection it brings a deepening personal awareness to your work sometimes parang nawawalan ka ng gana to to work to do your assigned task because uh, you are actually forced to do that napipilitan ka lang so that's why it's very important to do self reflection before going to your work going to school before doing some tasks do some self reflection so doing this is actually rewarding to the both to you and to the patient so next is you review medical records for example you are already in the hospital um you can review medical records of patient because this will help you in gathering information as well as planning on what areas to explore with the patient so you look at the identifying data of the patient this will also uh, reviewing the medical records will also um, provide you past diagnosis as well as treatments but remember don't allow this information that you've gotten from the medical record to influence or prevent you from developing new approaches and ideas bumalik so next is um clarifying your goals for the interview so what is your goal So probably at this point in time since you are students you need to get a comprehensive health history as as part of your requirement diba obtain a comprehensive health history but for clinicians probably um you need um one of the goal is to complete the forms to complete the the chart for standard healthcare institutions Also, when uh, following up uh, healthcare issues and testing hypothesis generated by the review of the chart. So you also need to um, review your clinical behavior and appearance. So this is very important because. When you go to the hospital, when you interview patient, your patient will be observing you. Mga sabihin ng pasyente, ano ba tong doktor? Um, kuan in in hindi well groom. Um, hindi ata to nag-study kasi hesitant. Mm-mm. Do not know what he's talking. So patient will be observing you even your posture your gestures your tone of voice your eye contact this will all convey your interest as well as acceptance and understanding of the predicament of the patient otherwise kung uh, hindi ka attentive to your patient na ano nila yan Uh, nakikita since these patients also are observant so you should become you should become an unhurried hindi nagmamadali so once the patient started talking uh, do not interrupt baka sabihin mo sir inin adi mag ano na mag alas dos na may klase pa ako gusto na <laughs> so uh, you should be calm you should be unhurried 
as as I've said, grooming also is important, ha? Huh? Grooming, especially, di ba? Um, these patients are look up to doctors, so you are future doctors. So dapat ah, uh, you should have good grooming. Nakawait ka pa naman. <laughs> So you should have also some adjustments with regards to the environment. So you make your interview setting as private and comfortable as possible. So for example, if you will go to EVRMC, because this is our ano, base hospital, EVRMC, um, sometimes there are patients who are in the lobby as a maraming ano maraming maraming patients so in this case for example you are already on the physical examination make um a little ano privacy para sa patient so you can probably use a linen to cover the patient to make him or her comfortable and then um, if there is an available room where you can make your interview na hindi ma noisy so you can go to that room if it is allowed ha huh? bring the patient to ano of course you have to inform the accompanying or the significant others or even bring also that the significant others to the room so that the patient will feel comfortable kasi sometimes kung nag-iisa lang um, the patient might especially kung female tapos the interviewer is a male baka sabihin harassment na to you're bringing your patient to a an exclusive room so make sure that you have somebody, especially the accompanying or the significant others with him or her. And ikaw naman, the interviewer, should also have another ano, companion. So proper in environment actually will improve communication. Kasi sometimes, if it's not private, the patient will not talk. Kasi maraming makakarinig. So there are those patients who are like that. They will not um, give you information because the environment is not private or not conducive to the interview setup. So as I've said, you suggest moving to empty room instead of talking in a waiting area or in the lobby. But since we don't have, like in EVRMC, where it is always one in, in full, so there are patients who are at the lobby. One way of making it private is spreading you, again, you cover a linen, parang may ano ba in between. So the, the, patient next to the pure patient will not hear what he's talking. So you make adjustment to the location and setting that will make your patient more comfortable. So you take down what information you can get from the patient. So write much of what you have learned Jot down short phrases, specific dates or words, rather than trying to put them into a final format. So baka, uh, wait, wait, sir. Uh, what else? What else? <laughs> so you just jot down phrases, specific dates or words, rather than uh, trying to put them into a final format. You will have time to uh, write the complete history of your patient. 
at the uh, at the time that you're interviewing the patient, you just take down phrases lang. And then do not let note taking or written or electronic forms distract you from your patient. So um, you're busy jotting down. You you're now um, you're not looking at your patient. So walang eye contact. So may insecure and paciente. He would feel that he is being ano lang, experimented parang ganun ang feeling. So you should maintain a good eye contact. You put down your pen or move away from the keyboard when you are talking to the patient. So um, more personal. So it's more personal. So these are the sequence of your interview. So you greet the patient and establish rapport. So meaning you give your undivided attention to your patient. And then um, you spend time on small talk to put the patient at ease. So like um, you greet the patient, you can um, ask how the patient is, how he is. Um, for example, this is accompanying, ah, ito ba yung wife mo? How many kids do you have? Mga ganon, small talks. Um, pero, paka puro, puro ka na lang small talks, natapos na yung time, ha? Um, small talks will, as I've said, will um, demonstrate interest in the patient as a person. Then you set your agenda for the interview. So this time you will be asking now um, the reason why the patient was admitted or why the patient seek medical attention. So traditionally, this is designated as your chief complaint or your presenting problem. So you can elicit the chief complaint by using an open-ended question. So halimbawa. Um, you will be asking your patient, um, what was the reason why you were admitted? So the patient would give you, um, kasi masakit yung dibdib ko. I have chest pain. So that's actually an open-ended question. Hindi, sasabihin mo, na-admit ka tungod nga maululimdughan. It's not an open-ended question. You're already supplying the information. <laughs> so uh, use an open-ended question. And then you now invite the patient's story. So you now start to talk. You now start to ask and allow your patient to talk. So um, the patient will tell you, um, I had chest pain three days ago, but I have this chest pain on and off for almost three months, mga ganon. Then he will start to talk about the ano. Now, do not interrupt. Do not interrupt. So after the patient would tell you the story, now it's now your time to ask kung meron kang uh, kailangan itanong. But you have to take a note while the patient is talking kung what are these things that you should uh, be asking. Kasi na-left out ng pasyente. So, focusing approach um, to explore patient's story is another, ano, is another um, method to explore now the, the patient's story. So, you can now ask the patient, how would you describe the pain? Kasi hindi niya nasabi, ano, I have this chest pain, Three days ago, but I have this for almost three months. So now you could ask the patient regarding the description of the pain. To describe the pain, if there are any aggravated or relieving factors for the chest pain. Um, you should also expand as well as clarify the patient's story. So... 
for example, uh, you will tell the patient you 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 have mentioned earlier that this chest pain has been there for three months on and off, but for the past three days you were having chest pain. Is that right? So that's one of expanding and clarifying the patient's story. That's one example of how you clarify. Kasi baka um, iba yung pagkakaintindi mo. So you want to clarify the patient's story. And then after this, you now create a shared understanding of the patient's concern. And you negotiate a plan. So negotiating a plan or planning is usually um, a competency in your third year. But um, planning also could mean here, like for example, you have not finished or you can tell your patient that is it okay that I will uh, come back if there are other informations that I failed to ask. So that's all also negotiating a plan. Kung pwede ka bumalik, ay baka pagbalik mo, since you have not um, informed the patient, sabihin, bakit andito ka? Why are you here? Um, I'm done with the interview. So you can tell before you end or close your interview, tell the patient that is it all right if I'll come back, if uh, I have missed some informations during my interview. So parang we're asking for it, um, asking the patient if it's all right or okay for, for him or for you to come back para ma-interview again. So after that, you this will be followed by your closing. So you will thank the patient for being cooperative, for giving you information needed for the health history. So these are some techniques uh, needed when you are skilled te or technique of skilled interviewing. And we will be discussing this in detail in our next meeting. So um, active listening is one skill, um, guided information or guided questioning, I mean, nonverbal communication, your empathic responses, validation, reassurance, partnering, your summarization and transitions and empowering the patient. All these are techniques that you can use during interview. So there are also some specific situations that will need um, some interview skills. So how will you deal with a patient who is silent? For example, ayo mag mag give ng information. Um, what about confused patients? Ano yung gagawin mo if you have a confused patients? What about those with impaired capacity? Like for example, um, uh, deaf, di ba? Deaf patient. It's difficult actually to, ano, to interview deaf patient. So probably what you can do is ask the, ano, the, the significant others kung which um, of the ear is better. So doon, you will uh, be on that side or talking on that side, kung right or left. Ba. But we will be discussing this also in details on our next meetings. What about talkative patient? What will you do with talkative patients, with disruptive patients or angry patients? There are those who are also angry, especially those who are um, in pain. Why are you, why are you asking me 
this uh, information when you know that I am ill, that I am sick, I'm feeling, uh, I am in pain. So what will you do in this uh, situation? Then what, what about those with language barrier? For example, um, mga foreigner. What will you do? And then patient with low literacy. Then patient who has deaf or hard of hearing. Ito sabi ko kanina, no? the blind patient or patient with limited intelligence. Di ma- patient seeking personal advice. There are those patients who would um, seek um, advice. Pero di ba your purpose is just to get the history, but not to be a counselor or an advisor. <laughs> so what we do with uh, this situation? So we will be discussing this more or in detail on, on our next meetings. Then there are also some sensitive topics that will call for special skills. It's very difficult to ask mga questions regarding sexual history, uh, mental health, or alcohol and drug abuse, if there is family violence, death, and dying. It's really difficult. So these are sensitive topics that will need special skills. So we will also um, discuss this on the next meeting. So there are also some societal aspects of interviewing, demonstrating um, cultural humility, sexuality in the clinician, patient relationship, and ethics and professionalism. All this also will be discussed on our next meetings. So I guess that's my last slide. Thank you for listening. And do you have a question? Wala. May hangover pa ba kayo from the, your ano, vacation? <laughs> Di pa masulod-sulod pag eskwela. <laughs> but anyway, sige. Um, who is the liaison? Uh, you, you get a screenshot for the attendance. Okay po, Doc. 116 man ka mo. 116 man it participants. Um, 117 daw po kami, Doc. 117? So may, may, duha nga absent. Oh, duha. Po. Kasi, upod man ako ito nga, 116. Okay, sige. Oh, po, Doc. Mag-screenshot. Hmm. Can you check kung sino yung absent? Okay po, Doc. So our next meeting will be on Thursday. Same Apo time at 8.30, ano? Then after that... Foundation Day, so walang uh, no classes on Friday. Kasi our classes will be Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Tama? Okay. Graduation po, Doc, hit Friday. Huh? Okay. huh? Graduation po, hit clerks hit Friday. Ah, oh, oh. And it's the start of your foundation day ata, di ba? O 23 nga niya that start, hit foundation. 
Wala, oo. Nag-ano ako ni Doktora Roa. May misa alas otso ko, no. Oh, Friday, 8 a.m. Sige, Dan na, Dan. Yes, good dog. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you, dog. Thank you, dog. Thank you so much, good dog. Thank you, dog. Thank you, dog. Thank you, dog. Welcome. Thank you, dog.